This is the premiere. Jesus did not die for your sins. I will be doing a presentation proving that that is not true. Jesus didn't die for nobody's sins. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That right there, my friend, is false. There's not one scripture in the entirety of the Old Testament that says in those words, Christ is going to die for your sins. That is new. There's not one scripture that says Jesus is going to be crucified for your sins. That right there is all new. This is something that has never been taught throughout the Old Testament. And I challenge anyone to post a scripture, to call me up. I have the phone number right here in the description where we can schedule a debate or a discussion in peace, okay? And I'm thick-skinned, okay? You're not going to offend me. And we can have a discussion on if Jesus died for your sins or not, okay? So I will be challenging you, all right? The phone number is right there on the screen. There it is, the single sentence penned by Paul around 55 CE. That is the rationale behind the most fundamental tenet of Christianity that Christ died for our sins, no one else, nowhere else. Now, a tenet is a principal belief or doctrine generally held to be true. Now, I teach here in the house of David that the tent peg killer is Paul. He is identified as the woman named Jael, the original tent peg killer, when she killed Sisera in her tent with a tent peg. She crept up on him softly and she drove the nail through his temples. Think about that. And that's exactly what the Apostle Paul has been doing. He's been killing the church with the cross. He's been killing the church with the cross. Now keep in mind, the original Roman cross was the shape of a tent peg, a capital T. Now I want to keep going. There's not no scriptures in the Old Testament that is going to tell you plainly that Jesus died for your sins. As a matter of fact, you see the opposite. And I'm going to get those scriptures. This is going to be Deuteronomy 24, 16. The fathers shall not be put to death for the children. Neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Then I have Ezekiel 18 20. The soul that sinneth it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Second Chronicles 25 4. But he slew not their children but did as it is written in the law in the book of Moses where the Lord commanded, saying, The fathers shall not die for the children, neither shall the children die for the fathers, but every man shall die for his own sins. Now that was written by God Almighty with his own finger when he gave Moses the Torah, okay? So you don't see any scriptures that tell you that a son is going to die for the father. The only scripture you can go to is the book of Isaiah 53 11. And that is literally talking about the servant of God. It is speaking of Israel. And if you want to go metaphorically and speak of Jesus, okay, that is speaking of the lie of him on biblical record. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Why? Because they set him up to take his inheritance and the apostate, the imposter, Paul, pushed that lie that Jesus Christ was crucified more than any disciple. Now, Isaiah 53, 
He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities. That scripture right there go against what I just presented in Deuteronomy 24, 16, Ezekiel 18, 20. That right there goes totally against that. That tells you you don't have the right interpretation of that scripture. This is speaking of the lie of Jesus Christ on biblical record. Okay? Because according to the Bible, the son shall not bear the sin of the father or the father shall not bear the sin of the son. Now, in 1 Peter 2.24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That's all I need right there. That right there is against scripture. That's why I call the Bible the two-edged sword. It speaks two different things. You have scriptures that justify alcohol. You have scriptures that don't justify alcohol. You have scriptures that justify multiple wives. Then you have scriptures that don't justify multiple wives. The scriptures speak double. Okay? It is a two-edged sword. It is a book of contradictions. If you are paying close attention to these scriptures, okay, a lot of people don't do enough homework and enough studying to know that the Bible does speak two different things. Just like right here on this topic of someone dying for your sins. That is a scripture that is literally clashing right now. Here you have Peter saying that Jesus bore our sins in his own body on a tree. Then we have scriptures that say the father or the son shall not bear one another sins. Then we have Isaiah clashing. It is a back and forward collision with the scriptures. Now I want you to keep in mind something about Saul. King Saul of the Old Testament and King Saul of the New Testament who is the founder of Christianity, who is the Jesus of the church, the Apostle Paul. They both named was Saul. They are both from the tribe of Benjamin. The symbol is the ravening wolf. Okay? They both killed the church of their day, and there's something else they both have in common. They are both involved with the sin of of sacrifice what are you talking about people I'll tell you what I'm talking about now if we was to go through the Old Testament we will read about Saul okay this is going to be first Samuel 13 9 and Saul said bring hither a burnt offering to me and peace offerings and he offered the burnt offering because Saul refuses to listen to God Samuel says he has forfeited the hope and eternal destiny of Israel. Saul's sin was sacrifice. He presumed to take on the office of a priest when he was not a priest. Not only that, he was supposed to wait. He was supposed to wait till Samuel arrived. And Samuel was going to offer the sacrifice. Okay, the Quran says that the Jews and the Christians believe in Jesus too soon. They believe in him before his death. And that's going to be the judgment of the people of the book and the Christians. Saul was supposed to wait for Samuel to sacrifice. Just like Saul of the New Testament was supposed to wait for Jesus to die later. Now the Quran. It literally tells you that the Jews and the Christians believe in Jesus before his death. And I'm going to read that for you. Every one of the people of the book will definitely believe in him before his death. And on the day of judgment, Jesus will be a witness against them. That is Surah 4, 159. God is letting you know right there that the Jews and the Christians, they are sacrificing Jesus right now. 
They are believing in him before his death. Okay, in their mind, because of the Apostle Paul put that tent peg there, they believed that Jesus was crucified already. And one of the main reasons why Saul lost the kingdom is because he was supposed to wait until Samuel arrived for Samuel to offer the sacrifice. In other words, he was supposed to wait till Jesus comes and dies. Okay, in the future. But what did the Apostle Paul do? He made the sacrifice too soon. Okay? He taught that Jesus was crucified for our sins, which is a big lie. So the sin of both of the Saul's is the sin of sacrifice. King Saul did not wait the full seven days. Okay? That is a number of completion. He did not wait, but he offered the sacrifice presumptuously. And it's the same sin of Saul. He did not wait till Jesus come and die. He sacrificed Jesus before its time. That's the truth. Why are you so blind that you can't see? That the sin of both of the Saul's was the sin of sacrifice. I'm going to get that for you again. This is going to be 1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 9. And Saul said, bring hither a burnt offering to me and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, verse 13, thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established the kingdom upon Israel forever. Now we're going to keep going with Saul. This is going to be 1 Samuel 15, 20, because this was an ongoing problem with Saul. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agon, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. The message of Saul is sacrifice, okay, is greater than obeying God. And that's the same sin of the New Testament, Saul. He teaches that we are justified rather through Jesus Christ's sacrifice, us putting our faith in that rather than obeying God. So Jesus' sacrifice is more better than obeying God. Every Christian would agree with that right there. That Jesus dying for our sins is far better than than us obeying God directly. But the Bible says the opposite of that. Going on to verse 22. And Samuel said, Have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. So according to the prophet, whose words never touched the ground, Samuel, the mule, okay, the picture of the Gentile messenger, the true prophet, the seer. He says, obeying God is better than sacrifice. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. According to the Bible, obeying God is better than sacrifice. But the apostle Paul, who is Saul, okay, he teaches that Jesus' sacrifice is greater than our sins. Which one is right? Is Samuel right or is Saul right? As we look at this story, we see that Saul was wrong and Samuel was right. Okay? Verse 23, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as the iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the Lord, he have also rejected thee from being king. Now I have some more scriptures to prove to you that obeying God is better than sacrifice. 
This is going to be Isaiah 111. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. God wants us to be obedient. Verse 19. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. So according to the most high. God wants us to obey him rather than sacrifices. Keep in mind that a sacrifice is only made because you are not obeying God. So obedience, okay, is before sacrifice. Now let's go to Psalms 51, 16 and 17. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, thou will not despise. Both of the saws of the Old Testament and the New Testament were all about sacrificing instead of obeying God. Simply put, both of the saws were into justifying the wicked. Now I have Exodus 23, 7. Keep thee far from a false matter. And the innocent and the righteous slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. The apostle Paul teaching that Jesus was crucified for your sin totally clashes with Exodus 23, 7. It tells you not to kill the innocent. It tells you not to slay the righteous. Okay? It tells you not to justify the wicked. The wicked is going to have to have his own fate. He's going to have to have his own judgment placed upon his own head. Okay? If you do good works, you will be rewarded. That's the way James taught. That's the way the Quran teaches. That's the way Jesus taught. The apostle Paul is the one who introduced to us justifying the wicked through faith. All right? Deuteronomy 25.1 If there be a controversy between men and they come unto judgment that the judges judge them. Then shall they justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. So God's system was, if you do good, you will be rewarded. If you do evil, you're going to get that same reward. There is nobody finna hang on a tree for your sins. You're not finna get off the hook. And that's what the Apostle Paul teaches. Now, there's more scripture that I can keep going on and on. Isaiah 5, 23, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from them. So according to the Bible, you are not supposed to justify the wicked. Every one of the people of the book will definitely believe in him before his death. Speaking of Jesus. And on the day of judgment, Jesus will be a witness against them. Saul was supposed to wait for Samuel to sacrifice just like Saul of the New Testament. Paul was supposed to wait for Jesus to die later. Both of them acted hastily and they both were in a rush. Okay. Samuel commanded Saul. To wait. Wait. Samuel was going to do the sacrifice. Did he wait? No. This is both of the errors of the Old Testament Saul and the New Testament Saul. They both could not wait for the sacrifice. Okay. According to the Quran, Jesus will die later. The problem with the Jews and the problem with the Christians is they already believe in his death too soon. He didn't die yet. Now, this is first Samuel chapter 13, verse eight. Now, he waited for seven days until the appointed time that Samuel had set. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal and the people were scattering from him. So Saul said, bring the burnt offering and the peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. But as soon as he finished offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him and to greet him. 
Ironically, Saul sinned by offering the burnt offering for sin. That's the sin of both of the Saul's. That was the sin of both of the Saul's. It was the sin of sacrifice. 1 Corinthians 2.2 2, For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Galatians 3.1 O oh foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Galatians 6.14 But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. So the sin of both of the saws, my brother, was the sin of sacrifice. Israelite camps, they teach that you should not wear a cross, okay? Because that reminds you of Jesus Christ's death. That is so hypocritical. Paul is glorying in the death of Christ. He counted that as a victory. But you don't want your people to wear crosses? That don't make no sense. That does not make no sense, okay? The death of Jesus, okay, is the victory for the church. But you don't want your people to wear a cross. I don't get that. Islam is real. They don't believe Jesus died on the cross. So therefore, they don't believe in you wearing crosses. That makes sense. Now, when you look at John 3.16, John 3.16 does not say Jesus is going to die on the cross. You will have to interpret it that way. Okay? And if you go to John 3.14, I understand that's where you get that from. Because what happened was the children of Israel sinned, so God sent fiery serpents among them. They was complaining about the bread and water that it was lacking while they were in the wilderness. Now, that's metaphorically today of Jews and Christians speaking against the teachings coming from Islam, speaking against the messenger of Arabia. They were complaining. OK, that's why I believe that the Apostle Paul's sword is like Goliath's sword. OK, it is the trap that God wants to kill the wicked with. This is the mouse trap. OK, the teachings of Paul is the mouse trap for the unbelievers. Because when they sinned, crying that there was no bread and water in the wilderness, God sent fiery serpents from among them. And what happened was the apostle of that day was Moses. OK, the true apostle. And Moses prayed to God and they took a bronze serpent. OK, and they put it on a pole. OK, and if any man was bitten, all they had to do was look upon this brass serpent. OK, and they would live. So unless you believe that Jesus was a serpent and you believe Jesus was a snake. OK, then that's your belief. That's where you get that from. OK, but to me, I understand that that could be a picture of Judas. OK, according to the gospel of Barnabas, it wasn't Jesus that was crucified. It was someone crucified in his place, just like Isaac. Isaac wasn't crucified. Something was killed in his place, just like the kid goat that was killed in Joseph's place. Joseph was not murdered. It was a big lie, just like it's a big lie about Jesus being crucified. Now, I understand when I look at the story of John 3.14 about the serpent being lifted up, that is a picture of something else being killed in Jesus' place because Jesus is not a serpent and Jesus is not a devil, okay? So John 3.16, my brother, is not talking about Jesus dying on the cross, okay? It is not. And if you look at that same verse, in the Gideon's translation, okay, in the Arabic language, it says Allah sent his only 
begotten son. Not Eli, it says Allah, okay? And we know that God's choice, okay, was the prophet Muhammad to be the Gentile messenger to gather all nations, not Jesus. Jesus was only sent to the lost sheep. He was only sent as a mercy to the house of Israel to wake Israel up, and they did not receive him, okay? But he did announce the coming of the comforter, which is the Gentile messenger. Also, going back to Paul, okay? Because we've been talking about King Saul, and King Saul is none other than the real King Saul. That is the Apostle Paul who stole God's church and blamed it on Jesus. Yep, that Saul, going back to him, he called himself the father. He called himself the father. And I'm going to get that scripture for you. This is going to be 1 Corinthians 4.15. For I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. That's what Paul says, okay? He admits that he is the father, okay? Peter didn't say that. James didn't say that. And they were with Jesus. Jesus didn't even say that. This is going to be Matthew 23, verse 9. And call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father which is in heaven. Okay. Now, this is in Surah 3340. Muhammad is not the father of any one of your men. But he is the messenger of Allah and last of the prophets. And ever is Allah of all things knowing. Now here we have Jesus and Muhammad. I like to call them the two fingers. You can't separate them. They're brothers, okay? They both are saying they are not the father. But here your boy Paul in 1 Corinthians 4.15 says he is the father. Explain that one. Explain that one. Now you understand that Jesus followed after the religion of Islam, not Christianity. That was Paul. That was Paul preaching on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's Christianity. Okay? And he didn't follow closely after the religion of Judaism. According to the Gospels, he didn't. Okay? He didn't adhere to the Sabbath day law. According to the Gospels, if there was any religion that Jesus followed closely after, it was the religion of Islam. When they tried to make him king, he didn't go for it. When Pilate accused him of being the king of the Jews, he said, thou sayest. He said, I came to bear witness to the truth. And that's exactly what we say in Islam. I bear witness that there's no God, but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Peace and blessings be upon him. So I just proved to you that the sin of both of the souls was the sin of sacrifice. Read the Bible for yourself. You will see that both of the souls have amazing parallels. Okay? They both was a picture of the Antichrist that's soon to come. Okay? Saul's sin was the sin of sacrifice. Worshipping the creature more than the creator. All this is coming from the house of Saul. Remember, Saul was a witch killer. He was killing witches. <laughs> Just like the apostle Paul was killing Christians. But what happened? What happened? Saul started listening to witches. Okay? Just like you today in Christianity, listening to all that witchcraft. That is the exact same parallel. Okay? I encourage you to study your Bible. I encourage you to have someone call me and set up a debate because I will prove to them that their God 
is the Apostle Paul. If they are Christians, I will prove to them that they are not following Jesus, but they are following Paul, who is the teacher, who is the rabbi, who is the master of the Christian church. Shalom and assalamu alaikum to my brothers in the truth.